City Newsroom here, producer of Eyewitness News. Samonate George is NDC member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. He is one of the proponents of the LGBTQI bill. He's joined us on the line now for some quick reactions. Uh, Honorable, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. So that's the AG's opinion we just read. Um, what will be your initial comments having heard the issues he's raised? Let me say very good evening to you and your listeners. But I'm, I'm surprised that this has become a subject of public conversation at this time because this report, this, this memo from the AG has been with the committee for quite some time. In fact, it was supposed to have been sat on today by the committee and the AG and the sponsors. But for the sitting of the ad hoc committee that Mr. Speaker set up, where both chairman and ranking of the, the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee are members of the ad hoc committee. So I have some difficulty discussing the memo in public when we are going to have it in there. But let me just be clear that we have had a look at the AG's memo. And as sponsors, we are excited about it because the AG largely fundamentally agrees with almost all the aspects of the bill. Um, we, we take cognizance of the fact that the AG in drafting his memo, um, basically, and, and, and let me just say that a lot of work has gone on in the quiet. A lot of people have said we've abandoned the fight, but in the last four five months, a lot of work has been going on behind the scenes quietly. And what we realized in working on the AG's memo as sponsors was the fact that the AG was referring to the original version of the bill. But the committee has met with the sponsors, we've had debates, we've done a cross-by-cross consideration. And so the bill has changed to some extent. And some of the things that the AG raises in his memo have already been taken care of between in meetings between the sponsors and the committee. And so in the current form that the bill stands, um, a large chunk of the things that the, the, the AG raises in his memo have been dealt with. But we're excited, like I said, about the AG's memo. Um, we're criticized on, on the ban on marriages and fostering and adoption and said that that was an infringement on fundamental rights. The AG makes it clear that laws of that nature or of that nature are consistent with our constitution. Even when you look at, and when you read the AG's memo properly, I mean, it's one thing reading the conclusion. You need to read the memo itself. But in there, you will see the meat of the issue. Because I heard Sixers make reference to rights that the AG suggests, again, and that's the AG's opinion, uh, suggests his opinion is not sacrosanct. It's up for debate. Some, some rights could be infringed. The AG himself admits in that memo that, and he quotes the Giba case in, in that memo, in the memo he sent to the parliament, he quotes the Giba versus Attorney General case of 2017, where Benin GSE said that there is nothing like an absolute freedom. The AG himself quotes that in his memo. So the AG is minded that no freedoms are absolute. And again, the AG himself has sponsored a bill or quite a number of bills to parliament that we have passed where he has curtailed fundamental human rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution. The right to association. The Attorney General, in his Vigilantism Act, curtails that right. It's a fundamental right. But the Attorney General curtails that in the public interest and in national security interest. And so the AG himself admits in his memo that there are grounds for, 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 for rights to be curtailed. And so, yes, he raises rights that could be curtailed. That's what I'm saying. Don't just read the conclusion. Read the substance of his memo. In his memo, he admits, and even cites cases where he has, especially in the, the Giba versus Attorney General case that he cited, it was on, this, on the substance of what appeared to be a gagging of the media when it comes to the propaganda and placing of, of adverts. You remember our bill places an, 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 an obligation on media houses not to give platforms or dissemination of pro-LGBTQ material. And in there, he quotes that and says that, yes, even though the, the media has the freedom of expression, those freedoms are not absolute. And you must do that minded at public health, public morale, public safety, and national security. So I think we are on solid ground. And um, once we are able sometime next week to have this meeting with the AG and the committee, we should be able to then move on to have our report and then late before the rising of the house. Once that is late, I'm confident that sometime 
in the next first meeting of next year, that will be between January and, and, and April, the proper debate of, of, the, of, the, of the bill will happen. So you are expecting that this bill continues through next year, not necessarily this year, which means by the end of this year you do not anticipate that it becomes law, or at oh, least it, you would be it, done it with is, your it work. Is, it is practically impossible to pass the bill this year. The budget is to be read on Wednesday. And, and, and so even if the committee were to meet on Monday, for example, let me just even say we were to meet on Monday, we would take the Secretariat some days to put together their report and then share that with the committee members for their cross-check and verification before it will now come to the table office to be laid. And after it is laid for the debate to happen on the clause-by-clause clause with all the amendments, given the budget sequence, this meeting is a budget meeting, so it's practically impossible for anybody to expect debates on a bill as sensitive as this to happen now. What will happen before, what I'm confident will happen before we rise in December will be that our report, the report of the committee will be laid and it will be for the consideration of the House which will then lead us to the debate early next year. I'm confident that before the end of the first meeting of, of, of next year, or maximum second meeting of next year, we should have been done with all the clause by clause and amendments that will be filed. Now, what that means also is that because you have, um, you said that you have done a lot of work on the bill and the bill is a work in progress, it means you're making concessions to the points that the AG has raised in there and you are going to inculcate that or incorporate that rather in in the in the bill that you'll be putting before the the house including the name of, of, of the bill that's not entirely correct like i said to you we have already worked on the bill before the ages memo came in that's what i'm saying so and, this, and let's, that's let's I'm saying that, mind. yes i'm saying that this work that you have done does it include what the age is pointed out now and i'm not necessarily saying issues. that you are so so you are preempting the AG of a sort, but I'm just asking if the things the AG has raised are things you have started working on already. Well, I would say about 80% of the issues that the AG has raised in his memo have already been created for between the committee and, 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 and the sponsors. And so, and, and, and the rest of the issues he has raised, it's not every issue he's raised that we agree with. Let's, okay. let's be very clear on that. There are some of the issues as sponsors, we think that the AG is wrong. We are insisting to the committee that we would carry those to the floor and have a debate on that. If the AG feels so strongly, he's welcome to debate us on the floor now. On the so, issue of financial matters, though, but, you can't debate it, can you? It is black and white in Article 108. Well, well, and that's why I'm saying that the AG's reading of, 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 of financial matters is, is, is actually moot. It's dead ab initio. Um, except the AG is seeking to challenge Mr. Speaker's ruling. And he, he would do that advisedly and guided by Mr. Speaker's ruling. Mr. Speaker would not have admitted a private member's motion if it, if it found on Article 108. And the Speaker was very clear in, 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 in admitting the motion where he addressed the House and said that he had sought legal advice. And the Speaker himself is a lawyer of over three decades and still a... Uh, legal practice. He's convinced that our bill does not frown on Article 108. I am convinced that, as well that our bill, I mean, like I said, I don't want to go into the details, but for example, think, the Attorney General, think, the yeah. General mm, says that mm. an imposition of a duty on the executive to inculcate the right cultural norms infringing on Article 188. And I think that's the, that's the big stretch by the AG, respectfully. The learned Attorney General is, is fishing when he makes such, such submissions because the state is, is, has a duty, I think another Article 38 or 39 of the Constitution to ensure the integration and inculcation of the appropriate cultural values into the fiber of our national being. It's in the Constitution. So, those are not new responsibilities that we are giving to the state. Those are responsibilities the Constitution has to be read. I think it's Article 30 now, so it talks about the cultural, uh, the cultural aspects of dimensions of our state, and the directive principles of state policy, I think Chapter 5. It imposes that duty on the state already. So if we repeat a constitutional provision, you can't say that we are giving a new, a new um, uh, cost element to the state. That's what I'm saying that we, we, we have 
taking into consideration a lot of the things right. he's talking about on, already. On the financial matters, the AG mm -hmm. says, I'm of the view, and this page four, I'm of the view that the bill may hold financial implications for the state, particularly regarding, he gives three grounds. Let me go to the second ground. He says, the payment for medical assistance or therapy by an approved service provider under subclause 6 of clause 19, clause 20, and clauses, uh, clause 23 of the bill. Now, in, 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 it's almost as if he foresaw the response you would give to say that you defer to the speaker. So he says that a determination of the satisfaction of the conditions in Article 108 ought to be made objectively by the person presiding over proceedings in Parliament on the basis of analysis properly conducted by proponents of any bill in question. That is a, the, the AG's viewpoint. Except the AG is impugning wrong motive in the decision-making of the Speaker, which I, I, I respectfully hold the view that, that the Leonard Attorney General will not, will not even accept the to do that to his learned senior, uh, the right honorable Abansumani Bagbin, to suggest that the speaker was not objective in his in his in his decision to admit the bill. And and, and I think that and that's what I'm saying that if you read the the, the language, he says it may. He, he 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 that's why I said he may be overreaching. And and that's what I'm saying that a lot of the things he has raised have already been dealt with between us and the committee. In fact, we, we hold the view that our meeting with the committee on this AG's report wouldn't even last an hour. Because most of the things that he's raised are matters that we, we spend three days in Koforidia from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. 12 hours each day for three days, non-stop, with, with, with the committee going into the matter, debating them, looking at the merits and the demerits. And quite a number of things have have been added and have been dropped from the bill. And, and that's what I'm saying, that when the final bill is laid before the House, the intentment and the objective of the sponsors will be carried out to the latter in a way that conforms, con con consistent with the Constitution of the Republic. Very well. Let's leave it here for now. Thank you so much. You know what, Sam Nati George is MP for Ningo Pram Pram and a proponent of the LGBTQI bill currently before the House of Parliament. This is Eyewitness News.